Hello. So I want you all to come with me now to a business meeting we recently had. So one of those big glass buildings, we're in some bank. It's Friday, it's late afternoon, somewhere past three. You've all, well, everybody had their coffee. There's about 15 people there. It's a yearly digital strategy meeting. There's someone like Robert that just spent an hour explaining how conversions are going to go up. Then there's the, also the ATL agency that has presented their big new idea for next year. And then we come out and we say, oh my God, we're going to totally reinvent social. And the one thing that we're going to do, we're going to introduce Instagram and we're going to make it big this time. And the brand manager looks at us and says, do we really need that Instagram thing now? <laughs> now, I'm not going to tell you what we replied at that moment. We're going to save that for the end. But the reason why we're telling this story is because we get the feeling that the entire industry is currently basically asking themselves this question, but in the same way. Everybody is like, do we really need to? Well, do the clicking? No, I, I can perfectly s capable of clicking. <laughs> or am I? You see? What help? Fine. This is called un unusual confidence. Can we? So, first of all, we want to explain why did they ask us that. Uh, a year ago, we started a new digital creative agency in Serbia. We are currently these lovely nine people, um, and we're still growing. Um, we are currently managing uh, social media profiles and web design for these brands. What is relevant for this particular presentation is that we are currently running the largest corporate Instagram profile in Serbia, and one of uh, the largest, which is Coca-Cola, and we're also Jumbus's main competitor with uh, RefreshTube. So this is why we think uh, we want to tell, we, we want to ask, we want to pričamo. Talk. <laughs> to talk about Instagram today. Thanks. Um, so, who has Instagram? Hands? Cool. Now, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I've listened to Dave's presentation. <laughs> Remain uh, the hands up and tell me who prefers to see in their Instagram feed the post on the left. No, no, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> so no one, good. Now, the post on the right was done with virtually no resources. It's a brand run from a garage by someone who's ne never had previous experience. Now, why does this brand is able to communicate with you on Instagram in a better way than most corporations today are? And not only this particular brand, but, for example, in Serbia, if you go to any of these brands, you will find better content on Instagram than for most major corporations that have much larger budgets. In fact, these particular brands have developed themselves and branded themselves as Instagram niche brands. Instagram is their main platform that they use to reach out to consumers. Now, why did this happen? Because when we started with Instagram, we all knew how to do Facebook. And the agencies then went out and said, well, we'll bundle up Instagram with Facebook, and then it's going to be an add-on to something you do. And while Instagram was starting, this was a, an okay business model. But today, so raise your hands if you think that Instagram is in the region 10% of Facebook. Number of users, 20? 30? Who said 50? Yes, you would be right. Around 50% is the mark now. A year ago, we held a similar talk like this, and at that time it was 20, 15 to 20%, depends on the, on, on the country. Now, why is this important? Because we're used to Facebook, right? We use Facebook to get large amounts of reach. We use Facebook to promote a bunch of different ad formats. 
And we use Facebook for video, even though we are perfectly aware that their view metric of three seconds is an um, outrageous lie. But currently, we have a different, different way. So first of all, when we're talking about reach, Instagram is no longer a niche platform. Second of all, Instagram is genuinely tied to emotion the way Facebook is not anymore. Now, Miroslav said at one point, and I think it was a slip of the tongue when he said, you can't beat Coca-Cola on Google AdWords. It's not true because Coca-Cola doesn't use Google AdWords. Because you buy it in a physical store, na trafici. And at that moment, you already need to have knowledge of Coca-Cola, and you need to know that that brand is for someone like you in order for you to choose that beverage at that time. If Coca-Cola wants to position itself as cool among a million and a half people in Serbia, it needs to have a genuine presence on Instagram. Also, when we're talking about identity, people now view Facebook as their address book, while they view Instagram as a picture of their lives. People pay much more attention what they put on Instagram than what they put on Facebook. And they also have a lot higher bar for brands as well, because they want brands to then have posts and have content that is truly engaging, unlike what they're used to Facebook. Grandma is here because everybody and their grandma is on Facebook. And who do we know traditionally is on Instagram? Shout it out. Young urban population, right? OK, so if you're working in marketing, can you name me in the previous year where you received a brief for any brand that didn't involve young, urban, and a wealthy population? Because that's the most coveted target group that we have in marketing in general. Whether you're in FMCG, whether you're in banking, and then we have a young couple looking for a new flat that's all, that can do anything with their app, and they look like hipsters because we're now a cool bank, you know? We're constantly trying to position ourselves, majority of brands, in this target group. And yet we are failing the channel that is most used by our target group to signal identity. So now what? How do we do it differently? And because I don't know nothing about Instagram, really, <laughs> Milos is going to take over. Yeah, because Instagram is basically my favorite social media. Want to do the clicking while I do the talking? I think I can do both. It's, it's impossible. So do you agree with Goran that Instagram is important now in digital marketing? OK. Do you agree with Goran that we're failing it miserably as brands? Come on, guys, seriously, it sucks. But let's see why. It's actually really simple. No, that's actually, this thing is weird because uh, you got to push the down arrow if you want to go, oh. like, it's really strange. Um, Instagram has very specific aesthetics, you agree? Like, it does, does this make sense? You want to produce a post for Facebook and you want to produce a post for Instagram, and can you do the same thing? Do brands do it? Why? Why can are you, you doing use, it? Can you use your print ad on Instagram? <laughs> I mean, yes, technically you can upload it, but why would you do that, dummy? <laughs> um, next slide, please. <laughs> so what is the aesthetics of Instagram? Uh, you're not going to believe this. This is a groundbreaking. Like, when I say this, you're going to be like, oh my god. It's photography. But it's not funny, because people are kind of getting it, but not really. And that's why they're putting their logos there. And they put a little ribbon down below that says special offer. That's not photography, dude. That's like design, and it's even a bad one. So it needs to be photography. And it needs to be that special kind of photography that looks good on Instagram, right? Because not every photography looks good on Instagram. Am I right? OK. Next slide, please. So what is, what is this Instagram aesthetics weird kind of thing? No logos. That's really hard for brand managers to understand. We don't want to see our logo there, dude. We don't want to see it there. It's a photography. It looks bad. We don't want to see any text. If you want to say something, if, it if, you, if you need to do it like in text, you're not doing it on Instagram. Are you familiar with the three logo post? 
So you have a brand, a picture of the packaging of your brand with huge logo on it. And then you have a profile picture, which is also a logo of the brand. And then you additionally brand it on the side. So if someone doesn't know what it is, you, they get the picture. Yeah, you know for sure that they know what is the brand. Do they like the photo? Who cares? It's like one of the photos that you post. No one cares. And it has to be one simple idea because like someone mentioned, we scroll a lot, like kilometers per year or whatever. So we're not actually looking at stuff. Like I'm not scrolling my phone and I go like, mm, this photo, let me check out all the little details on it. No way, man. I scroll it and I just see something. Oh, it's a boat on a lake. Looks cool. Let's go. Let's go. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Next slide. So this is a really fun question that we thought about. I, I like spent a whole day thinking about this sitting in my room and just thinking about this. So what is this photography that looks good on Instagram? Is it this little thing here, which is my first Instagram photo ever, which is a terrible photography. It's, some, it's, a, it's a really good book, but I, I really suck at photography back then. Or is it this one, this beautiful girl in the field of rye? What do you think? But what is it? Where is it? Professional? Anybody else? Anybody wants to fight her? <laughs> I mean, not like really fight her, but any other ideas? Oh, yeah, that's a good answer. Like, you're playing it safe, right? It's somewhere on the line. <clears throat> but actually, yeah, do it. It's right here where this red little thingy is. It's impressive, but achievable. What does that mean? It means that you see a photo and you go like, wow, man, this is a really good photo. But could I make it? Well, maybe if the light was right, if I had a bit better camera, it's like I can get there. So we believe we don't have any proof for this. I need to say this. We don't have any data to support it. We don't, need, we don't have anything. I'm just selling you my like whole day of thinking. So this is an idea. You either buy it or not. So impressive but achievable. Another important thing about Instagram is consistency, 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 consistency. Because we actually subscribe to an Instagram profile. We do not, it's, it's a follow button, but we subscribe to it. When you click a follow button, you're actually saying, hey, dude, I like your Instagram. I want to see more of those shit that you make. That's what you do. And if, the, if then suddenly Gordon starts posting pictures of his cat, I'm like, what is this, man? It was all parties last week, and that's what I subscribed to. Do you feel like that? Okay, so why is this so hard to achieve? We're going to find out on the next slide. We actually analyzed one of the biggest profiles in Serbia on Instagram. It's a huge telco company, bazillions of euros in digital marketing every year. And we said, okay, let's analyze everything they do on Instagram. Let's spend some time on it. And, they, and, we, and we saw, like, they do many different things, post every day. But these are the things that they do. They do HR stuff, makes sense, right? Like they want to showcase their work environment, people are having fun, there are lazy bags. They also show occasions, stuff like, I'm in the nature, I'm holding my phone, this is fun. Behind the scenes, like if they're shooting a TVC, they go like, check it out, it was so cool, behind the scenes. Collaboration, yes, they have some influencers, they collaborate with them, influencers go find a lot of snow, and they make a photo of it. It actually makes a lot of sense when you know the campaign. And then they do some CSR. You get the picture. They do many different things. It looks, everything looks different. Everything. Next slide, please. There are no such things as, as content trends on Instagram. It's not like you go out in presentation, you go to a client to say, like, on Instagram, we post on Mondays, motivational posts, on Tuesdays, salads, on, on Wednesday, Goran's cat. It doesn't work that way. You do one thing, and one thing only. And it's hard to understand. But if you're not doing it like that, you're not doing it right. So next slide is a bit of reality. Like what I'm saying is not happening most of the time. You go to a client, you say you post one thing, and they're like, get the hell out of my office. Like what's that one thing that I need to post? I have so many products. But maybe we can do it like this. Maybe we can, in, uh, when I'm still talking about a big telco company. Maybe post this. Like maybe this is your regular content that you post. Nature, occasion, people with their phone, exploring Serbia, whatnot. And then you have stories, you remember? Right? We're not talking about stories until now, but you have stories. It's like a thing you can do. But in the stories, you can do HR stuff. You can do behind the scenes stuff. That's more like story content. Does that make sense? Not really? And then you have paid on Instagram. OK, you can have ads. Like if you have 1,000 products, you have 1,000 ads. Nobody cares. You don't have to post it on your Instagram, right? 
And I think this is a good idea. I, I might even pitch it to them, actually. Um, we get to influencers. So the last lecture that you heard, I think Jumbus has a lot to do with influencers. But somehow, every time you mention Instagram, people are like, that's a related field to influencers, right? Because it's, it's really the origin of it is you start your Instagram profile, then you figure out it's not growing, right? You open up your Instagram, you have like 200 followers. And out of those 200, 100 is your friends that are like not even watching what you're posting. And then you go like, but yeah, but maybe if I hire influencers and they do stuff and we get like thousands of people. But how does that really work? I think Gordon's going to tell you. Robert, we have a table as well. <laughs> so this is where you need to do the math. This is where the creative works takes a back seat and you start crunching the numbers. Now, these are the top influencers in our table. The first thing you will notice is what's the table Porijana? Arranged. No, what's sorted. the table sorted for? That's, so that's why we do this in pairs, <laughs> because one can do the clicking mm -hmm. and the other one can do the talking and we can help each other. What's the most important thing in an influencer? The number of? No. Look. The, uh, the, um, the aggregate engagement for the last five posts, actually. Because lots of them have come to Instagram really early. And a lot of people followed them back then. But remember, Instagram has an algorithm now. So nobody sees their posts anymore. So you basically get someone who has 200,000 followers, but gets the same amount of engagement, which tells us that the same amount of people see, see their posts as someone who has 50,000. And this is why you need to do your math. And this is the first thing. The second is engagement rate. And this tells us how receptive is their user base. And if you go even further than that, you're supposed to find when they collabor collaborated with brands, take only those posts and then see the engagement rate for those posts. Because that is going to tell you how much you are going to see engagement when you cooperate with that influencer. And this is the reason why we don't have Facebook influencers. Because Facebook algorithm is much stricter. So when you pay a Facebook influencer, they post something that's your content, the edge rank just simply drowns it. And you have 3,000 likes, 3,000 likes, 16 likes. Because that was a paid post. And the, the audience notices that. I'm sorry, Gordon. I don't know how is it like in Macedonia, but you can tell me maybe if you feel like having a conversation now. Um, but in Serbia, every agency has a table. It's like, it's famous. You have that one table that contains all of your influencers. And we all have the same table. You know what I mean? Like the same five names are on the top. But once you do, you actually do your homework, add some more columns in that sheet, and then start sorting, you understand that most of the influencers you thought about and most of the influ influencers you spend your money on were not the best option for you. So I challenge you, when you go back to your office, if you're working in an agency, ob obviously, when you go back to your office on Monday, add some more columns that Goran suggested in your sheet. Do the sorting, and then if it doesn't work for you, let us know on Instagram, like, send us a direct message, like, you're, that was wrong. You were wrong. I would love to see that. Two final points. The first column tells you generally what they do, which gives you an idea that it might be good for a particular campaign you're running. But you need to know if someone you approach is good for that particular campaign. Just because they're big does not mean they're a good for fit for the campaign. And the final, percentage of growth and engagement rate is really good for telling you who bought followers and how they're going to develop further. So if you follow someone that has, for example, consistently 15% growth, you know that it's a good bet that you enter into cooperation with that influencer early that year, and then in the end of the year, you're going to have a really big profile you're cooperating with for the money you've paid in the beginning. So, Instagram stories. We're not gonna talk about them, actually, because they're a completely different lecture and a completely different user base, completely different logic. It's impossible to do it in one lecture. It's like people tend to, to, to make the same mistake they did with Instagram. So they go like, we know Facebook, it's Instagram, it's the same, we do the same. Fine. Now they do it with Instagram stories. They go like, I know Instagram, therefore I know stories. It's a completely different thing. The way content is produced is really different. 
what's important with stories is not important. Some of the things that are important for stories is like on completely opposite of what we just said for Instagram. So maybe next year if Darko decides to invite us again, which I'm not sure about, <laughs> it, it, we can talk about stories for sure. So we started this lecture with this question and a lot of you yelled yes. What we answered on that meeting was no. Because if you're not ready to put in the resources to genuinely open a new channel, so that means basically your social media budget was A last year and it's 2A this year, don't get involved. If you're not ready to have long-term cooperation and you don't have the budget for long-term cooperation with influencers, don't get involved. Because if you're going to do the same thing you've been doing on Facebook, the same thing you've been doing on print, then you're just embarrassing yourselves or your clients. So this is why we say we don't really need to do it. But if you want to do it, go and kick ass. Thank you, guys.